as a researcher, I've devoted my whole life for the last 40 years since I began my MD and PhD as a uh, scientist developing vaccines for parasitic diseases. Now we have several in clinical trials for diseases like schistosomiasis, moving towards Chagas disease vaccines and leishmaniasis vaccines. And then uh, we uh, created a coronavirus vaccine program about a decade ago not because we wanted to become virologists, but we, uh, through Sarah Lustigman, who's very well known to the Royal Society of Tropical Medicine, who's a distinguished onchocerciasis researcher, she introduced us to two outstanding virologists, the New York Blood Center, Shibu Jiang and Lan Ying Du, who had pioneered this concept of a safe and effective uh, coronavirus. So, we teamed up because we have the ability, even though we're not virologists, we used their concept and discoveries and scaled up production of a vaccine that we wound up testing with the Galveston National Laboratory and teaming up with Walter Reed Army Institute of Research to develop coronavirus vaccines, which we're now repositioning for this COVID-19 uh, pa pandemic. And uh, that's very gratifying to be able to uh, have that uh, have that role and we're doing something a little different rather than trying to develop a very high approach. We're looking at a low cost recombinant protein vaccine for use in resource poor settings. And we're having some very interesting discussions with vaccine developers in places like India to see if uh, we can partner with them to make this accessible for, for the world. And then in parallel, since there are not too many coronavirus researchers in the United States, it's put me in this interesting position to speak to the nation by going on CNN and Fox News and MSNBC. And, 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 and you may not know the differences between those cable networks in the, <laughs> in the US. They, uh, uh, they're not aligned politically. So uh, being able to cross the political divide and talk and focus it on the science, I think has been a, a meaningful role for me. Excellent. Um, do you have any thoughts at the moment on expected times to market? Well, uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci, who heads the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, has said a year to 18 months. I think that's an aspirational goal. Uh, you know, I, I point to the story about the Ebola vaccine, how it first began to be rolled out in 2015 after the epidemic in West Africa, but it wasn't until 2019 that it was fully tested and, and shown to be safe and effective and had, had an, an, an extraordinary campaign uh, where, uh, began where 200,000 people were vaccinated in the eastern part of the Democratic Republic of Congo under the most horrific circumstances of war and conflict and probably helped to stabilize the African continent uh, and prevented an epidemic that would have dwarfed the one in West Africa. It's one of the most important public health stories that's still not been fully told. Maybe that would be a good role for the Royal Society of Tropical Medicine to tell in more detail. But uh, the point is, uh, it, be, it really started years before and, and lasted all the way till 2019. And if you look at the full history of that, you're probably looking at close to a decade. And that's actually a more typical story for a, for a vaccine development program. So this idea of a year to 18 months, uh, I understand the urgency. Uh, it, it's going to be uh, truly heroic to see if we can adhere to those kinds of timelines and ensure that we can make a safe and effective vaccine.